What is up everybody? So a quick video for you today. I got a really insightful comment on our sigmoid video recently asking, why are we using E, Euler's number, when we come up with the formula for the sigmoid, a very popular function used in data science and machine learning? So as a reminder, the sigmoid function is pretty simple. It's y equals one over one plus e to the power of negative x. And a lot of times people write that as sigma of x to be more obvious that this is the sigmoid function. And we know it as this very nice S curve where it caps out at one on the top, caps out at zero on the bottom. The value at zero is equal to exactly a half and it's symmetric, it's very nice. It lets us squash this inputs between zero and one, letting us interpret things as probabilities and also having other nice characteristics. So we know why it's useful, but why does the number here have to be E? Why can't it be two or three or a hundred or something else? In fact, if we put any of those numbers in there, it's still gonna be an S curve. It's just gonna be stretched out or squashed in the horizontal direction. So let's just see what happens if we just use some arbitrary number K instead of this E thing, which is not a very nice number, just looking at it, 2.71828 dot dot dot. Why would we use that? Well, let's just pretend we don't. So let's say our sigmoid, our new sigmoid function is equal to one over one plus K, whatever number K, that you want to the power of negative x. Now we can write k very annoyingly as e to the power of natural log of k. Why are we allowed to do that? Because e and natural log are opposite functions. And so when we do e to the power of natural log of something, then the whole thing just equals the natural log's argument, which in this case is k. And so we can write our new sigmoid as one over one plus k to the power of negative x, which is equal to one over one plus e to the negative ln k of x. Seems like we just made it more complicated, but really we've highlighted one of the basic reasons that you can use e or you can use any other number you want. And it's not gonna change anything substantial about machine learning or the places that the sigmoid is used. If you use any other number k, I will add the caveat it should be bigger than one for it to maintain the sigmoid shape. Then you can just decompose that as one over one plus e again to the power of some constant natural log k times negative x. And all that means is that if we use some other number k in place of e, that's like adding some arbitrary constant into the exponent here, which as we know, and as we showed before, is going to just stretch or squash the sigmoid by whatever degree you need in order for it to fit the data the best. Another good reason, probably a better reason why we use the number e here is when we take the derivative of the sigmoid function, which is a very, very common thing we do, especially when we're dealing with neural networks and backpropagation. If we take the derivative of this new sigmoid function, then we work out some math and we get that it's equal to one over one plus k to the negative x times k to the negative x over one plus k to the negative x times natural log of k. Now, these actually have really nice forms because one over one plus k to the negative x is exactly that y or that sigmoid function. So we can write that as sigmoid of x. k to the negative x over one plus k to the negative x is exactly equal to one minus y or one minus the sigmoid of x. And so we can write that piece there. So we have sigmoid of x times one minus sigmoid of x. And then we have this pesky ln k out front. This sure would look a lot nicer and a lot cleaner if we didn't have that ln k. And if we don't want that ln k, then it should be equal to one. And if we enforce that ln k is equal to one, then a very simple doing e to the power of both sides gives us that k should be equal to e. So to make the derivative a little bit nicer, and we just have to write sigmoid times one minus sigmoid, which is a very nice shortcut that we can get away with a lot. We can get away with that and not have to worry about this constant if we just set k equal to e. So in a nutshell, why do we use e as the base here? Well, you don't have to. You can use any number bigger than one and everything you know about data science and machine learning is going to remain the same. Your notation just gets a little bit more annoying and we don't lose anything by using e. In fact, we gain a simpler form of this derivative. So hopefully that answers that question. If you have any other questions about why our formula is a certain way or why are we using this, could be something else, please let me know. I love answering those questions about just demystifying, like you don't have to do it this way, this is just a choice someone made for convenience at some point. And I think that just makes all of math and statistics and data science that much more digestible. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll see you next time.